Walter is with us in Yuma, Arizona. Hey, Walter, welcome to the Dave Ramsey Show. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you for taking my call. Sure. What's up? Uh, so my wife and I are, are doing very well. We're on baby step two. Uh, we've cleared out all of our credit card debt, and we're about to turn the corner this next year and clear out all the student loans and the car payment. So right. we're, we're on we're on track to do what we want to do. Cool. Uh, but I, I like to think two and three years down the line. Mm-hmm. The situation that we're in right now is that we, we're renting an apartment, and mm-hmm. I have, we have both the infirm agreement, agreements that we do not want to buy a home out when we are in a position of debt rather than be in a position of power. Okay. The question that I have is that uh, it's a two-part question. One is being the military, the the concept that you guys have in your book that we've read is that the income is your best building tool. The allowance for housing that we would get if we were to live off base would actually allow us, the, afford us the opportunity to be able to get a home, mm-hmm. but we don't know how to do that, if it's either through the VA loan or through the FHA loan. Okay. Ne- uh, neither. After writing all of, this out. Okay, here, here's, right, or, here's the thing. Neither. Both of those are the most expensive loans. The VA is the most expensive conforming loan, unless you're a disabled veteran. The fees and the uh, gotcha things that they built into it make it an, an unattractive loan, which is sad because it's supposed to be a benefit for you guys that have served, and thank you for your service. Um, number two, FHA is more expensive. The in, most inexpensive is a Fannie Mae, an FNMA loan, a conventional mortgage, and that's what you'd be looking for at the time you're ready to do this. And, of course, you've heard me, it sounds like, say, to have a 15-year fixed rate where the payment is no more than a fourth of your take-home pay. The other thing I would warn you about being in the military is this. Uh, As you are already aware, they move you a lot. And if you're not going to be in an area long enough for the house to go up in value, you could get stuck with a house. Um, There's kind of two types of areas that military uh, uh, bases and installations are around. Okay, there's uh, the small town that is a military town, and uh, so constantly there's a stream of houses that are being put on the market and sold because they're constantly moving military people in and out of there. That usually hurts the market when you get ready to sell because there's a huge supply of other people trying to sell, and consequently the prices don't go up quite as much. So the other type of base or installation they put you in is in a metro area um, or an area that, for whatever reason, has a very hot economy. And so, you know, you're in the Navy and you're in San Diego. Well, that economy, that market's booming independent of the military. And so if you get ready to sell there, you can sell that house and it will have gone up in value. So what you want to do when you get ready to make the decision whether to purchase in a given area is... You ask the real estate agent in the area, go to one of our ELPs, and you're looking for two statistics from the multiple listing service, and they can pull it straight out of their computer. Statistic number one is, what's the average appreciation rate in your area? Okay? How much do houses go up in percentage average in the area that you'd be looking in? The neighborhood, the general area, and the town, okay? The second thing you're looking for is DMA, days on the market, D-O-M, days on the market. Uh, And, um, uh, uh, you know, what that means is how long does it take a house to sell? So, if you're in an area that goes up 8% a year, and the average days on the market is 27 days, and you're going to live there three years, well, the thing's going to go up 25% in that three years, and you're going to be able to sell it quickly when you leave. You'll make money on that. You see what I'm saying? Yes. But if those two statistics sound like this, sound like 1% appreciation, and average days on the market is 270, which is nine months, you're going to lose your butt when you leave after three years. You're going to, by the time right. you pay expenses and they can't get the thing sold, that's not a market. That's a market that's slower. It's not as dynamic. It's not doing well. And you just don't buy there. You rent if you're stationed there. Okay? So if, we, so if we're able to satisfy those two statistics, then you can make an argument for 
yes, living off base, absolutely, and, and no longer and just making that investment yes. from the government to to ourselves. Absolutely, okay. absolutely. Um, the the off base housing allowance is a part of the equation, but more than anything else, you'll make money even if they didn't give you that by owning the real estate. And, uh, you know, the quality of life and so forth off base and everything for your family, it, it's different. And so, um, you know, but you do not want to go into, and I'm not going to mention names because then people get mad at me, but you know the types of areas I'm talking about that the military serve in. I serve you guys in the military. We come to your areas all the time and do stuff. And so our people do. And so I go into the area where there's really the entire economy in the particular or the virtual, virtually the entire economy in the particular little town is military. And you're not getting out of there alive with a house. You're going to get yourself skinned. Don't buy in that market. You know what I'm saying? Sure. So Okay. You, uh, well, this is very informative. I thank you for your time. And thank you for your service. We're here to help you guys, man. We appreciate you.